Hello there, I'm Michael Thomas, instructor at the Academy of Historical Fencing, and today I'm going to give you an overview and a review of a Cavitan side sword, a weapon that I've owned for a reasonable amount of time now. Uh, now this particular sword, I believe, is now called... let's have a look. Um, yes, I think it's just called um, a side sword 1. Let's have a look. Yeah. I don't know if it was called a side sword one when I first ordered one. You'll notice if we go through the list at the Maya website, Maya website, the Cavitan website, um, you'll see there are five types of side sword available at the moment. Um, this particular one here, the uh, Maya rapier, I actually have it here. Pop back. Uh, get the. Yeah, this is the one I did the video of last time, Maya rapier. Um, but I'm going to be talking about this particular chap today, um, which if we look at the image, I'll just pop it up. Okay, if we look at the image there, yeah, I think it looks like what they're calling, if you look at the top left, it looks like the one they're calling the um, side sword one. So we'll call it the side sword one until we know better. Let's pop that back. Okay, um, so this particular side sword um, I had quite some time ago, and my brother also had one. Um, I think his girlfriend um, Esther may have also had one, I'm not quite sure. But we certainly had at least two of them. Um, and this sword has had a lot of use. Um, it's been used against other side swords, uh, a little bit against long swords. It's been used with bucklers, shields, well, but basically every combination you can think of. Um, I've also lent it out to um, a friend of ours and a fellow instructor at the Academy of Steel, um, Jordan Mark, who um, I believe borrowed it for some tournaments. Um, so it's it's you know taken a few extra hits, um, taken a few marks, but nothing's broken on it, which is good. Um, anyway, if we just go to the website and we'll look at the spec, and then I'll go back to the sword, um, and we can actually look at it in the in the steel as such. Um, yeah, let's get me on the picture as well. Okay, so this is the particular sword. Uh, whoop. Let's have a look. Pop down. So the price is actually the base price is slightly cheaper than the um, the previous sword that I reviewed, the um, the Maya side sword, which I believe was two hundred and fifty euros. Um, in fact, what do I need to believe? I can actually go back, can't I? Let's have a look. So the Maya. Yeah, 250 uh, euros. So a little bit more expensive to have a little bit less on the sword. I don't know why. Anyway, so here's the sword. So you notice you've got a nice knuckle bow that's not attached to the pommel. Um, and this little bit down here, the sharp bit, we'll talk about that later. Uh, we've got a nice straight cross guard. Um, I quite like these little curved pieces at the end. Um, the little embellishments are always quite nice, as I said with the Maya side sword. Uh, but they do actually catch blades periodically as well. Um, you've got the extra rings on the front and a small side ring as well, um, which will protect you on the outside of the blade. Um, so just have a quick look at the spec. Um, so it's a whisker under a kilo, this particular model. Um, I didn't actually uh, weigh mine. I will weigh it, and I'll put the um, details for my particular sword in the, um, in the description below. Um, my particular version as well, when I ordered it, they didn't have these options, so you can choose blade tips, which is quite nice, and also choose peened or threaded. Uh, I'll talk about that in a moment as well, but nice to see those options. And the same kind of ordering time as well as um, uh, the uh, Maya side sword, six weeks. Although, as I said with the Maya sword, um, six weeks, that's as far as Kavitna are concerned. Um, how long it takes all of the in-between people to get it to you, uh, who knows maybe weeks, maybe months. Um, again, if you can find a reseller in your particular country, um, they can take the uh, the hit in terms of the um, shipping time, and you can just buy it and have it in a few days. Um, okay, so that's the particular sword. Um, yeah, let's go back. So uh, for some reason, the mouse is on the other monitor, so I'm trying to get it back. Okay, um, I'll show you the sword, and then I can explain a couple of things I wanted to talk about. So, unlike the Maya, um, we've got um, a very obvious um, 
tapering of the blade, both in thickness um, and in width. If we go up here, well, oh, it's not going to focus, is it? See, it's quite um, thick at the Ricasso, and you know, it's actually quite meaty. Um, and then it drops down to something a little, it's reasonably slender towards the tip, not crazy. Um, now this particular sword, you can, uh, unlike the Maya, um, because you've obviously got the protection at the front, um, you can grip it in multiple ways. So if you want to pretend it's a, a Maya side sword, or you just like um, to swing it, um, then you may prefer to go with a hammer grip, and you can rest the thumb on the side. Let's try not to stab the ceiling this time. So you can hold the sword here. There we are, let's get around the microphone. So you can hold the sword quite easily without having to um, put your finger over the um, over the cross guard. So if you want to, you can hold uh, use it like this. And I actually use it about 50-50, depending on who I'm fighting, what weapons I'm fighting, if I'm using a company weapon. Um, and it is actually quite a good cutting sword like this. Um, but there are conditions when it comes to the glove. Um, the other way is obviously you can finger the blade, um, in which case it works quite nicely. It's not too sharp down here. Um, it is It is still, you know, it's, it's, they haven't really rubbed it down, but it's it's not particularly, you know, it doesn't stick in, and you haven't got a nasty corner here digging into the finger. So you can, you can hold the sword like this, and it is actually quite comfortable. Um, the tip, my particular one came with a rolled tip. I don't recall us having a choice. Maybe we did, I, I don't remember. Uh, and this little mark here, this is a residue of tape um, because all of our swords, um, uh, the, the tips have got sort of archery blunts on and then we put additional tape and leather and all that kind of stuff. But I don't want to show you that, I want to show you the actual sword. So I ripped it all off just for you. Um, now you notice mine, yeah, it has taken a bit of a beating. Um, although if the edges, I think are actually looking pretty good, better than a lot of swords. Uh, and this has gone up against some pretty heavyweight uh, weapons as well. Uh, I can't say the same about the uh, the guard. Well, I can, I suppose, and it's still in one piece. But uh, if I bring it a bit closer, you can say, uh, see that it's definitely done its job. Look at all those marks. See, if that was an arming sword, that would be your hand. Uh, and you'll also notice it's got the um, the classic marks of a sword that's actually been used. Um, if you look here, that's no longer straight, is it? Look, can you see there? Yeah. You see, it's all a bit bent, a bit skewerf. Um, but again, it's still yeah, it's pushed down actually onto the blade uh, along here, up oh, here. But it's is it's still intact. Um, whereas you look at our um, early uh, Regeni swords. Um, bits were flying off them all the time on the cross guard um, and around the knuckle bow. Um, they just weren't up to the job. The new ones are, uh, are completely different animals, but the the early ones are quite susceptible to breaks. Now mine is peened, uh, not peened. Mine is a screw thread, which I'm not personally a big fan of screw thread uh, uh, threaded swords. Um, in my experience, they always come loose, and every time you tighten them, it reduces the um, the lifespan of the weapon. It stretches the tang. In fact, if you look at mine, it's not even remotely straight. And in fact, if you look at the bolt, when I first had this, the um, tip of the bolt um, was flush with the nut. And it's had to be tightened so many times that the, um, that it, um, oh, what's it called? The grip is, is compressing slightly and the bolt is stretching and pulling. So if you take this sword apart, in fact, why don't we take it apart? Let's do that. Tell you why we won't do it because it's really hard to get the nut off. Here we go. See, I should have done this before I started filming, shouldn't I? See the things we do for you. Look at that. Got myself all dirty now. Anyway, so the nuts come off. Take the Nice weighty pommel. Ah, oh dear. Yeah, that's that's not brilliant, is it? Look at that. Ah, interestingly, it says three on it. Now, what does that mean? It's it shouldn't be a rapier three, but a side sword three, I, I should say. 
Um, there's obviously a secret code there. What does the three mean? Hmm. It's almost worth contacting Kaviton to find out. Anyway, so you can see after a reasonable amount of use and constant tightening of the pommel, um, the tang on my sword has bent significantly. Uh, it's bent, it pulls up, so the pommel is actually slightly off angle um, and it constantly needs to be tightened up. But saying that, it still remains intact. Um, so it's not all bad news. Now let's pop this little chat back together. Maybe. There we go. Okay, so while I'm putting this back together, I'll just tell you about a few of the um, positives and negatives I found with this particular sword. Um, positive, in terms of handling, I really like it. It's a good cutter, it's a good stabber. Stabber? It's good at thrusting. I suppose it's good at stabbing as well. Um, so it's, yeah, it's a good all-round sword. Um, if you don't want to own lots of different types of swords, you don't want to go and buy a Maya Rapier, you don't want to maybe get a single sword, you know, an arming sword, get something like this and you can use it for everything. You can even get away if you want to go and um, do some British military um, sort of swordsmanship. Yeah, it's not a sabre, but, uh, but it's single-handed. You can do most of the techniques. So if you want to buy just one sword, it is actually quite a useful one. And you can use it for all different periods. Um, so, so, so that's quite a nice thing. Um, I like the hand protection on it. It works pretty well. Um, in terms of negatives, I'm not a big fan of the, the fact that it falls apart. Well, no, it doesn't fall apart. You, it keeps loosening and stretching over time. If you got it peened, that wouldn't happen. It would still get loose and it would rattle. Uh, anybody that's had swords for a while knows that your swords are going to rattle after a while. But, but in my experience, a peen sword will rattle a bit and you can fiddle around with it to try and stop it. And it'll just keep going until one day it finally falls apart. Um, whereas the blades, that can, there's the swords that can be disassembled. Um, I find they tend to die, the tangs tend to go way, way earlier than they would normally. But that, that's just personal experience. You might like the option of being able to swap out blades. Uh, it also comes down to how quickly you can get a blade. Um, I'm waiting for a blade from Kaviton, um, so I can pop it back on this before this one dies, because it is going to die. Um, not because it's been bad, but because the tang is obviously bent and it's going to keep getting bent. Every single time it's tightened, it pulls up higher and higher. Now, um, the negatives I was going to say is, if you look in here, it's actually quite sharp on the knuckle bow. And if I show you some of the gloves um, that I use, I'll get my um, battered old sparring glove. And I pop it in here, and it works okay. But if you have a look, rah, let's get around the mic. If you look at where that um, the bottom of the knuckle bow is, and you'll see I've got tape all over my glove. And that's because as I'm fighting down here, where's my, where is it? Here, it's like a little saw, and it cuts away, and it actually cut a hole. Can you um, sort of look? No, whether you can see, but right here, it cut a hole right. Th yeah, you can see the finger inside there. It's got to be repaired again. It actually hacked a hole into the side of my glove, um, which is a bit of a pain in the backside. So. I'd recommend, if you're going to be using a reasonably padded glove, which you should with something relatively open like this, um, I would probably take the edges off um, on this piece here. Um, or maybe newer models don't have it. Now, the good thing with Kaviton is they, they don't just make the swords, they like to use the swords. They're really into their weapons and they're, they're constantly evolving. So maybe this is the archaic, crappy version now compared to what the new ones are. Um, or maybe they're exactly the same. I don't know. Um, you'll have to have a look. You could obviously bend the knuckle bow, um, bend the knuckle bow out a little. Um, if you're going to do that, I recommend putting some heat on it before you do it. Even better, get somebody that knows what they're doing, and then somebody you can blame if they break it, rather than doing it yourself. Um, in terms of gloves, I suppose I should have started with that, shouldn't I? Um, just like the Maya, works really well with a battered old leather glove. Um, and again, I said you can hold it. Let's move back. So you can hold it um, really nicely. In fact, it locks tightly into the hand um, when you hold it as though you're using a, a Maya Rapier. So if you're not finger, um, fingering the cross guard, um, it's really comfortable. 
It's a really nice blade to use. Um, if you want to finger it, put the finger over there, and suddenly you've got something that's you know got some additional point control now. Um, and it's still you've got all lots of movement. You can change um, grip quite quickly. Fingers will move around. So yeah, great with the leather glove. But are you going to be wearing a leather glove when you use this? Unless you are the ultimate swordsman and you're never ever ever going to be even tapped on the hand, you're going to need something a little meatier. So we'll go to the bare minimum, which is a red dragon, which again I wouldn't recommend a red dragon for use with steel um, unless you're putting conditions on there. So you're rest either restricting the speed or the power of the hits, or you're sparring with sensible people, people you know and trust, um, that are going to be able to fight to in a particular way that isn't going to get you hurt. Now, how does this one work? Well, yeah, it, it, you can use it, and it'll it'll basically hold it there, but your hand kind of locks into position. Um, if you remember that guy in Willow that's got the kind of the um, spike um, um, on on his left hand, I believe it's his left hand. Um, he's got a sword in one hand, and he's got a spike sort of stuck on the left. Well, it almost feels like that, um, in that it kind of locks into the glove. Um, the older and crappier your Red Dragon glove, the less this will be a problem because it would have all loosened up. This is a reasonably new one. But even so, it's a little restrictive, but the hand does fit in. Notice the fingers are going all the way through. I've got full movement. Um, the thumb, it's okay. No, not amazing. Um, and then if you want to put your fingers through and hold it like a mire, well, no. Try and get my fingers in. Ah, that's just not going to happen. Well, okay, that's not true. It will happen, but you're going to have to force it there. And then when you fall onto the floor, you're going to find the sword is actually permanently attached to your hand. Um, so yeah, you're not going to be able to use it like a mire and hold it, or you know, like a sort of um, a back sword or something. It's just not going to fit. This microphone is way too high. Just give me a give me one moment just to lower it. Yesterday I uh, had a slightly different setup, so the microphone was, was in a different position, the monitor was slightly higher. Um, I come back today, it's all slightly changed, and now I can't see anything on the actual screen. That's progress. Okay, so back to the uh, sparring glove. Uh, I show you this one because a lot of people are going to want to have a bit more protection when it comes to using the side sword. Um, so as with the Maya, uh, the fingers move around. They don't, they don't actually move quite so freely as with the Maya, um, but they do all fit neatly through, although the shell won't go through. And as I said before, it just hacks away through my glove in the corner here. It's a real pain in the backside. After a fight, I look at it and I think, oh, I'm going to have no finger left at this rate. But once you get your hand in there, it is actually really comfortable. That actually feels solid. Um, in some ways actually even more comfortable than using the leather glove because it's kind of it's it's slotted in really nicely um, I can get really good um, thrust control um, I can do some um, you know, the cuts any kind of cut I want will work perfectly fine I get some great rotations um, I can get the point straight on line after a cut so if I'm converting between thrust to cuts and cuts to thrusts all fine all great um, it, it's not quite so handy if you're trying to get your hand out of the glove quickly hand out of the glove, trying to get your glove out of the sword. Um, so let's say you get up close, your, your sword is bound up or they're trying to grapple and they've locked your weapon, you might want to release the sword. In fact, well, I like to release the sword and then punch them. Um, so you try and do that, you release, and then you get you kind of get caught up in the, um, in the, in the guard. And then so you, you suddenly look like a prat because you can't take your hand out of the sword to punch them. And obviously you look far less a prat if you can punch them. Um, so that that's not that's one of the things that's not quite so great. Um, but saying that, you know, when you're actually holding the sword, and let's face it, 99% of the time you should be getting your hits by hitting them with the sword. Um, it works perfectly fine. Um, now, in terms of fingering the sword, fingering the grip, um, yeah, great. And actually, where's that damn camera there? I can move the thumb around relatively freely. Um, I've got good, good, good point control again. Um, I can cut really nicely, and with the big uh, mitten here, I've got all the extra wrist protection, which uh, is quite, quite nice. So, yeah, not bad. Let's try and get this glove back off. 
Okay, so I've shown you the leather glove, I've shown you with the red dragon, I've shown you with the mitten. Um, I've shown you the website. Just go back there again just to remind you. There we go. So it's the side sword one. Um, how much was it? 200? Yeah, side sword one, 200 euros. Um, about a kilo. To be fair, I tend to use kilos as um, measurements of sword. One kilo single hander, two kilos for a big two hander, one and a half kilos for a hand and a half, um, and then everything stretches out from there. Well, that that's my that's my measuring system anyway. Um, bear in mind they do have other swords on their website. If we if we pop back, and they do have these um, other side swords available. If you're concerned about the gloves. Um, Let's get me back on the screen. There you go. I've got it working, so let's have it on there. Um, if you want a different side sword, um, this particular chap here, the Side Sword 3, apart from it looking really nice, um, by removing the knuckle bow, it opens it up for using other gloves. So if you're concerned about, say, the five finger glove, or even if you wanted to use a mitten, um, and you're not going to finger the, the, um, the, the quillen, uh, then something like this would be great. Uh, or even the five finger glove, you'd get the thumb through that, I would think. Thumb? No, you get the four finger th uh, through quite easily. So this could be a good um, alternative, or even better, uh, by both. Because you can never have too many swords. There's no such thing as too many swords. Um, there's also this one, actually, Side Sword 2. Um, I think Nick and I were actually um, quite interested in the um, Side Swords 2 and 3. If nothing else, we don't have them yet, so that means we need them. But if you look at that again, it's it opens it up. You can use a different glove. So if you're a little bit concerned that this is going to get in the way, uh, or maybe even the Maya is going to be too much to get in, in the way of a meteor glove, um, then look at one of these. Uh, but saying that, uh, you know the the side sword one and the Maya are really nice swords to use. Um, I would definitely recommend the side sword one. So this one here, I recommend it if you're looking for kind of a universal sword. So one you can use. Uh, you can use it against um, sort of Italian rapiers, Spanish rapiers. Uh, I could reel off all the different swords you can use it against. I should list the ones you can't because you can use it for pretty much everything. Um, and if you want a companion weapon, if you go to Black Fencer, um, they, who also sell steel side swords, you can also get their synthetic side swords, which match up quite nicely in terms of um, um, the basic dimensions as one of these. So you've got loads of options now. Um, and I think that's about it. Um, it just go back to me. Um, so there you have it. Uh, I'll just pop it next to the Maya just for comparison. Oh, in fact, let's get them the same way around. There we go. So you, you can see the Maya has a. Hold up. Actually, it's a tiny bit longer on the grip compared to that one. Anyway, if you look at them, both really nice swords. Um, we're kind of living in a golden age when it comes to swords. So for anybody that was doing HEMA when we started, sort of one and a half decades, nearly two decades ago, um, there was so little kit available when we started. Um, Nick and myself, we bought so much steel um, trying to get the right combination of sort of speed and safety and weight, of which there was almost nothing available at the time. Um, and it was so expensive, uh, you know, 400 to a thousand pounds trying to get half decent steel. And now we've got some, you know, we've got great Russian swordsmiths, um, Poles, um, uh, Spaniards, Brits, Americans. We've got loads of good sword makers. Um, and the prices are really great. Now, come on, this sword, this one here, 200 euros, 250 euros. It's insanely cheap compared to what it used to be. Oh, don't forget, the, those prices are, um, they're euro prices on the website. Unless you're in Russia, um, you're going to be paying... Um, some kind of tax duty and shipping so you will have to pop that on top um, unless you're buying through a reseller in which case the prices will be slightly different I'll um, I'll pop the link to the um, sword at the um, in the description of the video and if you've got any questions about um, either of the swords let me know I think in my next video um, I'll stay with the Kavitan theme and I've got um, one of uh, Kavitan's custom um, uh, complex hilted long swords uh, it's one they listed on their on their Facebook, um, and it, it it looks an absolute beaut. It's got loads of hand protection, um, really nice strong blade, um, and it's a little different to what you normally see. You know, these days it's all about feathers. Um, this you can use it with feathers, but it it looks pretty special. 
So um, I'll pop that out, I'll make sure it doesn't look too grubby, and um, I'll record a video probably over the weekend and then pop it up so you can have a look. So again, any questions, pop them in the comments, and um, I'll do my best to answer them. Thanks.